This module covers a few fundamentals of absorption and scattering in the atmosphere. We will discuss transmissivity of the atmosphere and atmospheric windows. Satellite instruments measure radiance, which is related to the intensity of radiation at a certain wavelength at the top of the atmosphere. Sources of the radiation include emission by objects on Earth or scattering of radiation into a path directed toward the satellite. Processes that reduce the radiance observed by a satellite are absorption and scattering away from the path toward the satellite. The graphic shown describes an example of radiative transfer through a cloudy atmosphere. Red lines indicate sinks, and black lines denote sources. Radiation emitted by the ground, ocean, or the atmosphere below the cloud can either be absorbed by the cloud or scattered by the cloud in any direction away from the satellite. However, the cloud emits a different amount of radiation at the same wavelength, and it can scatter radiation initially not moving toward the satellite, into the direction of the satellite. Suppose the radiance at the surface is L, and the radiance at the top of the atmosphere is L sub top. The difference, dL, is a sum of four terms. Increases due to emission and scattering into the path to the satellite, and decreases due to absorption and scattering away from the path toward the satellite. Atmospheric transmissivity is shown here as a function of wavelength. In this figure, the gray shaded area denotes how much radiation can pass through the entirety of an atmosphere with average temperature and moisture content for different wavelengths shown on the x-axis. Where the gray area reaches the top of the figure, the atmosphere is particularly transparent, close to 100%, for this example here in the visible part of the spectrum. This happens in particular here in the visible part of the spectrum and also in parts of the microwave. In the infrared, there are several bands or ranges of wavelengths in which the atmosphere is relatively transparent. For example, the atmosphere is fairly transparent to 11 micron radiation. Such bands are known as atmospheric windows. Other bands are highly opaque. For example, at seven microns, Water vapor is a strong absorber. One would not want to use such a band for observing IR emissions from the surface, especially in locations where water vapor is often present. One can also see the role of various common molecules in the atmosphere on transmissivity of radiation through the atmosphere. Here, we zoom in on infrared wavelengths between 1 and 15 microns. Each row represents the transmissivity of an atmosphere containing an average amount of some molecule, listed here on the right. For example, ozone, shown in the fourth row, is not transparent around 9.5 microns. This is because ozone absorbs radiation at this wavelength. The bottom row contains the sum effects of all atmospheric constituents. You can see what water vapor, or that water vapor, dominates the total transmittance at most wavelengths because the bottom two plots are quite similar. However, you can see some bands at which molecules other than water vapor are particularly important. For example, water vapor allows 9.5 micron radiation to pass, but ozone does not. This means that the atmospheric window spanning approximately 8 to 12 microns excludes the narrow ozone band. Carbon dioxide causes absorption above 13 microns and at some other wavelength ranges such as around 4.2 microns. And this can be seen in the total as well. The effects of well-mixed molecules like carbon dioxide will be similar around the world. However, the effects of other molecules like water vapor are heavily dependent upon how much of that molecule is actually present. If no water vapor is present, then it will not affect the transmittance of the atmosphere at that location. We will use this fact as a powerful tool to use passive radiation detection in multiple bands to tell us about water vapor concentration in the atmosphere. So far, we have talked about the effects of Earth's atmosphere on absorption of radiation. However, as we saw before, scattering can act as both a source and a sink of radiation detected by a satellite. On the abscissa of this plot is wavelength of radiation, 
and on the ordinate is the radius of different potential scatterers in the atmosphere. We define a size parameter, which is 2 pi r divided by lambda, or ratio of the circumference of a hypothetical spherical scatterer to the wavelength of radiation. Rayleigh scattering occurs when the size parameter is very small. In other words, the wavelength of the radiation is large relative to the scatterer. Such scattering interactions tend to disperse radiation isotropically, or equally in all directions. As the size parameter approaches and exceeds 1, we enter the Mie scattering regime, which results in more complicated scattering interactions that are dominantly Foyd scattering. You can see the chi equals 1 solid black line running diagonally through the figure. The slope of these lines means that shorter wavelengths are more efficiently scattered in the atmosphere. For example, visible light, which is centered around 0.6 microns, is scattered by smoke, dust, and haze, but longer wavelengths such as thermal infrared radiation around 10 microns, or microwave radiation that's even longer in wavelength, are not scattered as much. Blue light is also more efficiently scattered than longer wavelength red light, which largely explains why the sky appears blue. For remote sensing purposes, this means that we are not particularly concerned with scattering in the infrared by the clear air atmosphere. The primary source of radiation at the top of the atmosphere for IR is emission by the surface or atmosphere, and the primary sink is absorption along the path to the satellite. Visible light, however, depends primarily on scattering to be detected. For example, for a satellite to detect a cloud, visible light must be reflected or scattered off the water or ice hydrometeors that make up the cloud. As you can see in this plot, cloud drops or raindrops are very efficient scatterers of visible light, and we know this because the chi value is very high. We're above this chi equals 50 dash line. Another example is that small aerosols are effectively transparent to IR radiation. For example, those resulting from biomass burning, which are common over the West Pacific and areas like the South China Sea, reflect more blue light than red light. We will discuss scattering in more detail when we cover radar later in the quarter.